All right, hello and welcome everybody. Today we're gonna to be going over the cold climate Excel sheet update. So um, we're just gonna cover that. We're not gonna to dive too deeply into the Neep website or anything. If you want, I have my previous video, which is with the old cold climate sheet. Um, you can find that here, I believe. I'll put a little card or whatever it's called up there. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go over the new sheet, which is a big, big step up. It um, You can combine more than one cold climate heat pump together to get the weighted averages to enter into HOT 2000. You can combine a cold climate with a non-cold climate, and you can also use it to just combine non-cold climate heat pumps as well. So it's a nice step up from the old one, which could only do one cold climate heat pump. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Okay. So this is what the new calculator Excel sheet looks like. So this is the instructions tab. You can see down here at the bottom, and then we've got calculations, and then we've got instructions and calculations in French as well. So I'm not gonna go over everything in here in detail, because we're gonna go over that in the actual video itself. But um, some things to note. So under section one, we scroll down, you can see now we need to include the HSPF region four in the calculation sheet. And then there's a note here that says, for some cold climate air source heat pumps, the data contained in the NEEP database is inconsistent. For these cases, the spreadsheet returns the data at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, the adjusted values cannot be calculated and the heat pump is to be modeled like an air source heat pump. So I myself have not run into this issue yet. Um, if you do, let me know what it looks like. Um, I'd be curious to see. But uh, basically, if the numbers... If it just doesn't work out in the calculation, then just enter it as a normal heat pump. And then down under section two, so this is how to com this is the instructions for combining multiple air source heat pumps. So if the cutoff temperature is needed, and it will be if it's a non-cold climate, but unknown, then enter negative 10 degrees Celsius for the default value. So if you can't look up um, what temperature the heat pump is rated down to to provide heating, then you want to just enter negative 10 degrees. And that's pretty much it for that. And if we take a look quickly at the calculations, nice thing now is everything's gonna show up here that you need when you're just doing cold climate heat pumps, they'll be up here. Um, before the adjusted cooling COP, you used to have to grab from down here in the Excel sheet, but now it's gonna pop up there regardless. We're still gonna need our heating degree days from hot 2000. And, but other than that, it's basically the same. Um, they took out the max capacity for cooling because that was not needed before. Um, if you entered it, it just didn't make a difference to the Excel sheet. And now you can see we can enter up to five cold climate heat pumps over here and five standard air source heat pumps over here. So if you enter the standard air source heat pumps over here and you're just entering air source heat pumps, you're going to get all your info up here. And if you're entering cold climate or multiple cold climate or cold climate and the standard air source heat pumps, all your data will show up over here. And then a thing to note, you can see I've got this set to BTU, HSPF, and SEER, but if we go down the default, it just says options, but you click on it, you can switch to kilowatts or BTU per hour for the heat pump or for the capacity. And then for heating efficiency, COP or HSPF, and just to make a note, uh, the HSPF here is in region four. It's gonna convert it for you at the top to region five. And then for cooling efficiency, you can switch to COP or SEER once again. So I always use HSPF and SEER because that's the easiest to find rather than COPs. But uh, you do you. Okay, so we'll just quickly take a look at modeling just a cold climate heat pump so you can see how it works. Um, what we would need to do first is go to HOT 2000, get our weather data so we can get our heating degree days. 4111 in this case. Um, you would have to type out your location, so we'll say... LFX International, and then for our, the rest of the data we're going to need is from the NEEP database, just download the PDF. I've highlighted everything you're going to need here, just so you can, easier to follow along. You can see we've got a Fujitsu HRI number, outdoor model number, indoor model number. Uh, the rated capacity you're looking for is always going to be at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're also going to need the SEER, the HSPF Region 4. For the capacity maintenance, you want it to be at the max 5 degrees, rated 47. And then for heating, we need it at 5, 17, or 40, and 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And for cooling, it's always at 95. And then we need BTUs and COPs for all the heating, and we just need the COP for the cooling. So in here, we would enter Fujitsu, and then we'd put our model numbers in, both indoor and outdoor. I just put a slash in between. The HRI number, which we have to get here. 
And if you had any notes, you can put them in here. And then over here, we're just gonna enter all of our BTUs and COPs. Start at five, then 17, now 47. And our cooling COP, and then we also wanna put in our HSPF region four. And then you can see here at the top, that's gonna to give us all the info we need to enter it into Hot 2000. And then if we hop over here, let's pretend we had a non-cold climate heat pump, you'd put in the BTU per hour. Um, if we didn't know the cutoff temp, we just use negative 10 here. The HSPF in region four, so let's say it's 11 and a sear, let's say it's 22. You can see nothing has shown up here and that's because we already have a cold climate in, so these numbers have now been adjusted. And if we take out the cold climate, now you can see all of our numbers are up here and you can see that the HSPF has been converted to region five. And then if we were to add another one, the numbers up here would update. But we really want this, and I'll just remove these. So this would be just the info we're going to use for the Fujitsu. So we'll open up Hot 2000. We'll go to Heat and Cooling System. We'll go to Air Source Heat Pump. Just hit OK on that pop-up message. We're going to go Heating and Cooling. This is a mini split system. And then here we would just grab Fujitsu. And remember with Hot 2000, you can't hit Control C or Control V, but you can right click and paste. Hopefully that's a feature they add sometime soon. Right click, paste, HRI number, paste that in. And then I'm just gonna leave the capacity as kilowatts. You can switch it to BTU by clicking there. 14.87, switch both of these to COPs, 3.21, our cooling COP of 3.04. And then you can see here it says set temperature cutoff type to restricted and then set cutoff temp to negative 7.6 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna switch this to restricted, negative 7.6. And then we're also gonna check the cold climate heat pump box. Bring up our PDF again. And we're just gonna enter the HSPF here as region four, which it is on the sheet, so 12. A sear of 22.5. Our capacity at 47 Fahrenheit is 25200. Our COP at five degrees Fahrenheit, which is our first COP here at the bottom and our capacity maintenance at max 5 rated 47, which you can see it says right there. So 101. And then all we have to do after that is go to house, go to info, go to add info, info 5, we're going to be putting in NEEP, so that Enercan knows it's a cold climate heat pump. All right, so that's the updated Excel sheet. It is uh, quite a step forward. I'm really happy you can combine all the heat pumps now, so there's no need for having your own custom sheets. Um, and just remember to save the PDF in your file folder as well as the Excel sheet. And that's everything. So if you enjoyed this video, I've got other videos on Hot 2000 and SketchUp. So if you're an energy advisor or looking to become one, um, check out some of my other stuff. And I'll see you guys at the next video.